guys, today we're going to talk about the only reliable way to tell between introversion and extroversion in terms of MBTI, and that is J lead versus P lead speech pattern. I think it's probably best to actually just separate it out into two different factors, like there is social introversion, extroversion, but it just doesn't correlate at all to cognitive function. Yeah, because the MBTI one, it doesn't say if you're introvert or extrovert, it just says if you're top function happens to be introverted or extroverted in orientation and depending on what that function is it totally might not translate to introverted or extroverted in the social science field whatever yeah. okay so uh this is kind of inspired by all you people thinking that i'm an extrovert <laughs> and all the comments that we've been getting like someone said oh you talk fast you must be an extrovert and honestly talking speed i think is like mostly an ni thing like do you have high NI? <laughs> no? You might talk fast. Uh, and then there's also people saying, oh, how much you talk? They're like, Cliff, you talk so much, you must be an extrovert. That must be an extroverted perception thing. If you have high SE or NE, I'm sure you can ramble on, on a, about a lot of stuff. And also how much you like people. That has nothing to do with MBTI at all. It's like yeah. a personality psychology thing in yeah, terms of... Yeah, that's like a preference probably or maybe even partially learned behaviors in there as well and yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and then there's the other thing which is um, recharging which mm. I think a lot of people believe in this. I believe in this to a certain extent. Like do you recharge with others or do you recharge alone? But I think this is quite confusing because everyone I think to an extent need alone time and social time. Yeah. So people might misconstrue when they're recharging. Uh, yeah, because I see a lot of people saying like, oh, I need alone time, therefore I must be an introvert. And like, yeah, and like, I know we've said this in a previous video, but your dominant function can be extroverted in orientation, but it's still more comfortable maybe to use that when you're like alone in your own space, but it's yet you're still using exactly cognitively extroversion in that sense, but not socially extroversion. So okay. two different things. Oh, but I just wanted to say that we actually did entertain for a long time that you could possibly be ENFP. And this was the thing did, that actually yeah. put it in place. So we're not just being like pig headed on this. Like, no, <laughs> we are right. Like I, yeah, for one point I was like, Ooh, like, I actually was leaning more towards you being ENFP at, at one point in time. No, I was too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, then, but then when we established this whole JP lead thing, I was like, oh my gosh, no, she's such a J lead. That makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah. she's Yeah, okay, wait, but... can you just explain to the viewers what it means concisely? Yeah, sure. So I guess this kind of goes back to the structure of the cognitive functions themselves. So perceiving functions deal with kind of <clears throat> structuring information in different ways and the way in which will just be dependent on the function itself. And judgment functions um, basically evaluate this information. So they kind of make decisions on it based on some sort of criteria. So based on that, someone who leads with um, a perceiving function mainly just kind of recalls information and basically just kind of states a bunch of facts or just, yeah, just like a bunch of information in, in, a, bun in a long string, pretty much. Judgment leads, they will lead more with statements that are like judgments or are like evaluations in some way. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of get into like what that actually means. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny. Maybe that's a Jaylee thing. Because when I asked you, I meant for you to define the... Right. <laughs> okay, so basically uh, for INFP, ENFP, they're both perceivers because they both use extroverted perception as their top extroverted thing. But the INFP is a J lead because her first function is introverted feeling, which is a judgment function, and the ENFP uses extroverted intuition, which is a perceiving function, so they would be a P lead. Okay. <laughs> Just, you know, in case that wasn't clear. Yeah, 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 no, that's good. What I wrote down was that P speech pattern is exploratory. Uh, kind of more open-ended, can sometimes be circuitous, uh, and is descriptive, and tends to have the conclusion last, so descriptive or observational, leading to a conclusion if it ever leads there. And uh, J-speech is closed, evaluative, decisive, definite, and conclusion first. So they just make the conclusion or their evaluation, evaluation first, and then if 
required. They might discuss how they got there, but sometimes they don't even. They just move on <laughs> to the next point. Like for example, if someone is asking the question, "What have you taken away from your summer camp experience?" For example, the P lead would probably say, "Oh, well,、uh, you know, last week I went to camp and then we roasted marshmallows over an open fire." So they start describing, right? They they start <laughs> describing. So that's not what I actually. For the J lead, they would say, "Well, what I've taken away is that it's a." Great social bonding experience. Period. You know, like <laughs> if you look at the structures of the sentences, the J lead person often answers questions with like a more concise, full fragment sentence, and then maybe meandering sentences. Whereas for the P lead, it's the opposite. Well, I think the majority of like the statements they make for most people will generally be like perceiving statements because just we probably do have to. Give information when we're communicating for it to make sense to other people. But generally, P leads will have like very few J statements, or they'll be like after they said like seven, ten sentences later. And J leads will have noticeably more, and maybe not all the time, but like a lot of the time, they'll be very near the beginning of their sentence. It just makes sense because we use both sort of sentences because we have to use both perceiving and judging. But I think the order of the sentences, it's it's really magical how it just mirrors the order that your kind of、right. functions are supposedly working、exactly. while you're speaking. Yeah. So I guess some like ways that I've kind of noticed is some of the structure that J statements have is like a statement where it's just like a noun is adjective, <laughs> like this is great or that was wonderful or <laughs> something like that. It's just like boom, yeah, or even or even like. A noun, yeah. A noun is the adjective noun. Like I said, like、yeah. oh, I've taken away that the camping is a good social experience. Right. And it, it quite answers the question like directly usually.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was yeah. The second one is like another one is like noun is noun. Like this is that, <laughs> or like you know I know that's so ni general, but like a lot of times that's what JJ's Jay, leads will say. They'll just be like this thing is this, and this thing is that, and it's just kind of like this almost like universal truth. Like yes, I've made this judgment, and here it all is. But an example of that is just like maybe this is a catastrophe, or something like that. It's like that's a judgment. Like whereas a P lead might be like things were very unorganized and people were unhappy and. Things weren't going as planned, you know, describing the actual things that happened. But the J lead might lead with like, "This was a catastrophe," and you know, because this happened, or blah blah blah. An interesting distinction between us when we type people is that for me, even though I'm like a judger in the MBTI code, I'm a perceiving lead with an I. What happens when we have someone to type? I kind of like look at their video first, and I kind of you know look at all our metrics, and I get a general idea of kind of what they could be, and then I like leave it alone for a day. <laughs> then I come back to it, and I'm like, okay, is my impression still the same? Or I guess there's that kind of like distrust in like, okay, did I get a correct or accurate impression the first time? Let me kind of do a few takes to make sure that I'm like making the right decision, or maybe I'll notice something the second time that I didn't notice the first time. So I guess I'm kind of just like trying to gather a lot of information before I make that decision. Yeah, it's really interesting when you say it like that because. Can you imagine an ENTJ doing this? No, they just decide. But then I think that's obvious. But what's not obvious is that so is the INFP. I just、right. look and I decide. Like when I get to that metric, I'm just like, okay, just decide now. And if you realize it's wrong when more information comes up, then change it later. So I always know if I'm leaning one way or the other way. Like it's just like self knowledge. It's interesting. And I think before you were also saying that like. You have to maybe like know how you feel about something before you even do it, and then you can like always change your mind、oh, about、yeah. it later. <laughs> We talked about it in the ENFP video. Oh, that、mm. makes so much sense. I was talking about how the ENFP just does it, tries it, and then、right. evaluates if they like it or、yeah. not. But I have to know if I don't know if I'll like it because I haven't tried it. But I have、mm. to know at least. It's it fits within the framework of what I would do as a human being before、right. I do the thing. It's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. So that really mirrors the order of the your primary and auxiliary functions. Yeah. So I guess basically I kind of even though I'm an outwardly judger in that sense that my first extroverted function is a judging function, I lead with an introverted perceiving function, and I actually kind of am. I do have that need to kind of like take in a lot of information first before making that evaluation, and I think cognitively for you, you kind of maybe doesn't even feel like making evaluations. Maybe you just kind of already know 
Hmm. what your evaluations are towards certain things? Uh, well, when I get asked a question, I tend to just know like my opinion on the right. answer. So I just answer it. And then if I feel like it's necessary to explain to the person, then I <laughs> explain. But I, I feel like it, like a perceiving lead, they're almost trying to find the answer yeah. as they talk about it. Yeah, I think so. They're like, you're talking to find the answer, but mm -hmm. I already know the answer. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. And I guess maybe with um, like extroverted, so like with NE DOMs and SE DOMs, that's more obvious that they're talking to find the answer because it happens externally. But I think with NI DOMs and SI DOMs, we have to go internally to find the answer for the most part. Mm. So that can make us, I think, a lot more like reticent and silent. And, <laughs> and sometimes I think we can't even always find the answer when we're in a group of people. Like, I think NESE could probably get there eventually because of how they extrovert their perception. But I think, yeah, for me to have any clarity on things, I need to, like, be by myself, be totally introverted mentally and figure it out that way. You know, this is just reminding me that, like, it's kind of like how, in a way, I feel like I'm on a closer wavelength to TE dominance right. and auxiliary TE people, for example, because for the TE doms, I feel like, okay, we're both together just deciding like, just decide and move on to the next thing right <laughs> but for the auxiliary te so you would be like si or ni dom i yeah. feel like sometimes we just keep talking about the same thing and keep <laughs> so just they just want to be in this state of uncertainty so they can become certain but i already know that i want to do this thing already right. uh yeah <laughs> yeah no i i feel the same way with like yeah <laughs> with p leads yeah, it's like yeah. i can just talk and they just talk and it's like oh yay we don't have to like make any decisions <laughs> okay so i hope that was like a satisfying explanation of why like after a thousand comments on why i'm actually enfp i still think i'm enfp yeah. despite entertaining that thought for a long time like i think someone even said haha you're like an escj i think i get that because mm -hmm. In a way, it's similar because I'm also judging first, just like an ESCJ yeah. judges harsh and fast. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so let us know um, if you're a J lead or if you're a P lead, or maybe if this makes you question or reconsider your type based on like what your primary mode of cognition is, and or if you guys have any examples of it. Because once you kind of like clue into this, I find it's like really obvious when someone just makes all these J statements and someone else is just like so open ended. <laughs> like even though it kind of conflates with the J P dichotomy and in introverts too, which makes it maybe somewhat confusing, but it's it's an interesting distinction for sure. Yeah. And it's really good for the stereotypes because when you say, Oh, really open ended, people can imagine like an INFJ like that, but people usually don't think of INTJs as like, yeah. oh, open ended. Yeah. But they are. <laughs> they are. I know from my life with Alex that, like, God, you should just decide already. Yeah, and if you guys want to be typed on objective metrics like the JP lead one itself, then you can find out this information on this on cognitive8.com. The link is in the description below. And if you guys would like to support our channel, check out our Patreon page where we offer exclusive perks. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.